Hey there, guys. How's it going, you hefty conquerors? How you doing, guys? Welcome to our development community update kind of stream thingy roadmap stuff. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We got a lot of news for you today. I got my coffee, by the way. I'm sorry for the for the sips. In the meantime, so um, we got a lot of news for you today that we wanted to share regarding what is going on with the uh, development and with actually the continuation of development of Ancestors Legacy post-launch because the game is out already but we're not resting yet not just yet we got a lot of stuff that we still want to do and as you can see here's a basic list of the items that we still want to release for the game uh, the first one is already out now we're actually going to be playing the demo that is already out on Steam and the idea is Mm, uh, I will talk to each of these, wait, there's two, four, six, eight, nine points in here in detail while Oscar, uh, designer from our studio, is going to be playing the mission that is available in the demo. So the demo is actually a single player only demo that is available on Steam right now. You can play it and we want to show you the contents of the demo it's one of the missions that is available in the full product but the thing is it's free for everybody we'll show everyone how to get the demo how to install it i hope if nothing crashes in just a second then we'll talk about dedicated servers or plan for that this is this is the first item that we're planning and hello everybody on chat i'm really glad you guys are here ready and um uh, we're, we're, we're planning to release dedicated servers, then also stuff with rankings. I will go into slightly more details about each of these topics in just a sec. Uh, then, of course, the spectator mode connected with the multiplayer tournament that we're going to do. And we do, yes, indeed, have plans for units, uh, for hero units and multiplayer. But that is our own idea. Uh, we have our own twist to it. So that's also something that I want to touch on. And then... Uh, we are working already on a second Slavic campaign that is going to be available for everybody as a free update for everyone who owns the game. <clears throat> then also, before we release the second German campaign, there's going to be a mod support and something that we call a party play as well. I'll talk about that uh, in just a second. Then, of course, the second campaign and right at the end of the scope that we are drawing in here today, of the roadmap that we're going to show to you today, is a paid expansion to Ancestors Legacy. I'm gonna leave these news for the last part of the stream and for now on let's jump. Uh, I'm gonna be showing you the Oscar screen so you guys can see uh, what he's doing. Yeah, so yeah. hello and he's got his Steam launched. Before we go into demo, uh, Oscar can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Oscar can you hear me. Before we go into demo, can you show one more surprise that we have for everybody right now, the soundtrack. Uh, we have decided to release part of the of the full soundtrack of the game for free to everybody on the YouTube. I've asked our composers, Adam Skorupa and Krzysztof Wierzynkiewicz, to make their own hand-picked selection of what they think is the best part of the soundtrack. They've chosen nine tracks. This is 25 minutes, which roughly makes about 25% of the actual whole thing. It's 35 songs, 35, uh, 35 tracks with over 100 minutes of music. And you can guys go to our channel and play it now if, if, if you want to check out the soundtrack because uh, the full soundtrack is available together, together with the game. You can buy it together with the game or buy it if you own the game you actually can and did not buy the game with a soundtrack, you can purchase it as an, extra, <clears throat> as an extra DLC. But to give you the taste of what it is, we've just uploaded part of it to YouTube for free to everybody. All right, Oscar, can we switch to the Steam? And if you guys go into the Ancestors Legacy product on Steam right now, uh, apart from actually the fact that there is a demo, like on the bottom of this list that is being displayed right now, if you go to actual product, the main product, also what is available is going to be uh, the button on the right side. We need to scroll down, I believe. On the right side, there's there you go. There's a button, download demo, and this is free for everybody. I mean, if you already own the game, you will not be able to download the demo because the demo is available only to folks that actually uh, do not own the game. I, I Don't ask Steam. I don't know, guys, please. Uh, but everybody who does not have a game and wants to try it can do it. Can we go into your library and show uh, what it actually looks like? Yeah, there you go. And there's Ancestors Legacy Demo. Some de debug messages, as you can see, this is also something that we try to work around, but unfortunately, I don't know. 
and then uh, we can launch it. We can launch it, Oscar. And um, we're going to be showing the content. The contents of the demo is just one single player mission. This is the first mission from the Slavic campaign. And uh, Oscar is going to be playing uh, the mission. I'm going to try to catch up in the meantime what he's uh, doing, uh, what, what what part of the mission he's playing currently. We'll, we'll see about that. Hopefully that's going to work. And um, the other thing is, uh, I'm, I'm also going to touch on all of these points from our roadmap to tell you, to give you just at least a little bit teeny tiny details on what we mean by each point. Okay, so uh, the mission is Reunion, as I said, this is the first mission from the, uh, from the, oh wait, I'm gonna have to shut up for a second and we're gonna watch the intro of the mission. In 10th century, Central Europe consisted of dozens self-governed and divided against themselves tribal authorities. Despite speaking one language, having same pagan beliefs and similar economic development. One of the biggest and most influential tribes was the tribe of Polans, governed by the Piast dynasty with a firm hand of a young prince, Mieszko I. Mieszko's father knew that expansion was the only way to halt the never-ending quarrel and broaden the influence of the Piast family, so on his deathbed he made Mieszko promise that he would be the one to unite the tribes under one nation, whatever the cost. Consequently, Mieszko carried out his quest with the dignity of cunning ruler, making treaties and winning allies amongst other tribes, expanding the jurisdiction of Poland. Yet, ambition is much like addiction, and Mieszko's unyielding expanse was bound to rattle a cage or two. Soon, Mieszko I started a ruinous clash with Orton tribes. Oh yes, he did. Oh yeah, and let's watch the actual 3D in-game intro as well. I'm gonna shut up. So this is the actual beginning of the gameplay. Uh, this mission is about either getting the uh, alliance of the of the of the three gourds that are in, in in here, or just claiming them by force. I've asked Oscar to do a little bit of both, and uh, and that's what he's gonna do. Uh, but we will try to treat the gameplay as a background. Uh, while I'm gonna be uh, telling you all the details about the uh, about the upcoming actions and the roadmap of what we're going to do we with ancestors involved. legacy from now on. and also of course we're going to use this as as a, as a as an example of how to play this uh, demo so this I, I, it, it's tough uh, we, we're kind of trying to do uh, two things at once and there we go and also we're we're trying to you know like uh, like kind of show everybody how to how to let's play this mission so that you guys know kind of a walkthrough kind of thingy and then at the same time or trying to talk about the roadmap. Uh, it might be, it, it might get a mess, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's go. Um, as I said, we already have some samples of the of the original soundtrack. I covered that. The demo is single player only. It's one mission. It we have done a multiplayer beta some time ago, and that's why we've decided that single player is something that we have not um, released at least a sample of it. To people for free yet ever that's why we've decided to make a single player demo even as a post launch demo it still doesn't matter we just wanted people to you know to make a decision before they decide to spend their money and give us their hard-earned money this is uh this is uh this is it um mm, mm, okay now one more thing i forgot to mention while we were at the uh, roadmap kind of art out there was that we are very very soon going to implement uh, one quite requested feature it's a tactical pause a lot of people were asking about this and uh, we're right now finishing the work on this so it's going to be available in the main game most probably because 
Uh, updating the demo is kind of tough. Uh, maybe we can add it to the demo, maybe not. We'll see about that. But it's definitely going to make its way into uh, the main product of, of uh, the main, the main, uh, the main product. Oh. Oscar is just showing uh, the um, advisors. There are no tutorials per se in a demo, but as you can see, there are some of the advisors in here that the guys have put. So uh, for all those that, that, that need some tips and hints, they're gonna be able to browse it anytime, just clicking the, 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 the zoom icon. Now, um, tactical post, of course, available only. In a single player mode i think oscar is going to start playing by going to the first gourd this is a gourd that is called what is it is it milnica that's the name of the gourd and uh, one of the one of the knyages lives in here his name is nipauka and then he was, he's gonna try to uh he's gonna try to do first part of the quest by claiming this gourd and this is going to be the first part of the story then we'll move to another gourd and see what we can do but this is something that you're gonna see now Dedicated servers are very important for us due to uh, due to a couple reasons. The first reason being um, this is uh, this is a very highly requested feature by our community. Of course, that's always the most important thing. That's how it goes. And uh, also, um, we have in mind a lot of features that are not present right now because we've not made them for the uh, for the release of the game, but. We still have them. There was always the plan to have them, uh, like more competitive play, a little bit more of rankings and and more competitive matches and uh, ladders and so on. And this is the first step. Having dedicated servers is very important for for like like a starting point for us to have. Let me just have a look at the chat. Thank you, Electro, Electrolf. That's thank you, thank you. <laughs> and um, the other thing is. Mm, we also have plans for tournaments so before we do all that dedicated services like must have but one thing that 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 that, that we want to make clear in here we are developing we are working on dedicated servers to have them set up on our own in our server farms whatever you call it and they're going to be available for everybody in your server browsers so you're going to be able to play them uh in there we are not at least right now planning to release like an exa file with a development uh, with a dedicated server to our community that's something we're not ready yet right now it, it would mean a lot more work than than we have done so far to be able to give you guys give you guys the uh, dedicated server so uh this is still in plans but the first step is to actually have them have them working and have them discoverable by everybody and being you guys being able to play on these dedicated servers Let's see some action camera action. Action camera action. Hmm. So Nyepauka apparently has been attacked at the Sacred Hill. Oscar is here right in time. Nyepauka is a bit low on health, but he's still probably going to be able to help him. And then we're going to see uh, the next part of the mission where Nyepauka is kind of has reasons to thank us and to do something for us. We wanted to reclaim the Holy Mound. Yeah. And then we're of course going to have to take advantage of that because our goal is to claim the gourds and unite them under one banner and that's Mieszko's banner our main hero now mm, what is next rankings i already touched a little bit on rankings uh because once we actually have dedicated servers we're gonna set up uh, a bit more competitive kind of environment on the um, on these servers so that anybody who wants to play ranked matches who wants to uh, find themselves in a letter, who wants to play in a... The, for all of those of you who are used to playing in a bit more competitive environment where winning uh, means gaining points, losing might mean uh, losing points and so on and so on. That is, that, is, that is something that a lot of competitive guys are used to. Like, uh, we, have, we, are, we are working on implementing right now and what, what we are going to put in there is... Uh, is ELO, ELO like system, ELO inspired kind of system of rankings and of points for the players. And that is going to be something that a lot of you guys, competitive freaks out there, are going to feel familiar with. So that is um, kind of an ELO matchmaking kind of stuff. Then, of course, ranked matches. And a uh, very important thing, it might be obvious for, uh, for a lot of you guys, but uh, the, 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 the ELO and the rank matches and all of this 
highly competitive stuff because there are also casual multiplayer matches which are not so highly competitive it's it's like you know we want this game to be for everybody and and these these rank matches are only going to be available on dedicated servers just so that you guys know about mm. What time length uh, the dedicators should be up? Ah, that's that's the most important thing. Um, of course, we do have some internal plans on when the exact points from this roadmap are going to be implemented, but this is very tough for us now to commit to it uh, because uh, we have learned a lot while working on the game that game dev is game dev, and some dates sometimes need to be shifted. That's why we do not want to disclose these dates yet. But I would say that the entire roadmap, like all of these nine bullet points that you guys have seen just a couple moments ago, uh, this is like three quarters of time, like entirety of it. So when, when we talk about dedicated servers, it's like, if it's not this month, then it's next month, probably, definitely, I guess, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> no, but it's not, it's not far away. It's not far away. Just bear with us, bear with us. Now, oh, Cammy is happy. I'm really happy that Cammy is happy. <laughs> uh, happy Cammy makes me happy. Um, so, where was I? Rankings. Oh, yes. And next item on our list, on our bucket kind of development list, is to organize first big official post-launch tournament. This is going to be a tournament that's going to be hosted on dedicated servers. And we are also teaming up with some people who are going to help us make it uh, more professional in terms of casting, in terms of you know uh, streaming and commenting the actual uh, the actual uh, competition. And this is something that we're going to have once we have dedicated servers set up properly, once all the rankings are working, everything. And then we want to do this right. We want to do a big official tournament i mean as big as ancestors legacy can be we are not counter strike but uh, give us time give us time and we invite you everybody to participate in the tournament that uh that we want to uh that we want to host in it's, it's not long a couple weeks that, that's what i can tell you these are at least the plans for now let me see where oscar is in a mission right now trying to figure it out that's nipeuka okay so he's got back to nipeuka He's, uh, he's uh, helping him. I just noticed that a guy dropped uh, a torch in the background because it's already getting daytime and they automatically dropped torch. It just looked awesome. <laughs> I just noticed that for the first time in my life. That was really cool. Um, okay. And to have, um, to have uh, the, uh, the tournament, I'm getting back to the topic right now, to have the tournament hosted the way we want it, cast it the way we want it and comment it and, you know, like served to you the way we want it we also want to implement a spectator mode in the game uh the way that it's going to be working is probably going to expand over time the very first implementation of the spectator mode is going to be uh pretty bare compared to what we still have in plans of course but it's going to be fully functional still the thing is uh it's sort of a prerequisite to actually have a tournament working as we want and and that's that's the main goal that's the main idea to have the spectator spectator mode working uh right at the time when we launch the tournament so that you guys are going to get the uh streams and com uh, commentary from the tournament the way that it actually should work so that is next item on our list now you mm, are let me see what you guys are kind of jealous so uh, you work for uh, no i work for <laughs> i am Mieszko. The Duke of the Poland. Right? All right, let's go. Uh, guys are already asking if we can hire them. Uh, let's not talk about this on stream. Okay. Now, next thing on our list is hero units. A lot of people were asking about whether, because we have hero, like Mieszko in here. Uh, we have hero units in single player, and it's not a very big deal to implement them in the multiplayer. So that's something that we will do. And a lot of people already had concerns because there, there were many uh, there were many discussions about how hero units can work in multiplayer. So I'm going to give you just a couple hints of what's in our minds and the way that we wanna that we wanna uh, implement hero units. Before I do that, however, just a small twist in the gameplay that Oscar is doing right now. He has uh, helped Nipeuka, so there's kind of a more of an allied, more of a peaceful kind of uh, part of the quest right now. 
He's talked to Misław, and Misław is going to attack. Uh, who is going to attack? He's going to Strebor, the guy that is on a, on a, on a, on the bottom, on the south um, southeast part of the map, Kuznyagort. There we go. And this is going to be a part of the mission where Oscar decides to do in a hostile way. You could also talk to Strebor and try to claim his gourd by alliance. That is possible. It's up to you, up to you guys to figure out the way that you want to play this game. This mission is impossible to play almost entirely peacefully. Like you can claim all three gourds without burning them down or you can do it opposite way. Burn everything down and there's lots of space in between. So, yeah. Just uh, just to give you guys a hint that this mission is it is probably one of the least linear missions in our entire game. Uh, and also one of the most story-driven missions. But that's the introduction of our beloved badass Mieszko, uh, the founder of the Polish country. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, the hero units from the from the in the multiplayer. So uh, a lot of people probably remember how hero units worked in games like Warcraft, for example. And this is not exactly what we have in our single-player campaigns, like. In our single player campaigns, when a hero dies, the mission is failed. So, one thing that we want to do is um, just a brief idea, and we still, of course, will be tweaking that, but, but where our minds are at right now, so that you guys know. Um, the hero units will be available for you from the start of the multiplayer game. You can ditch them if you want, you can like dismiss them right away and only use your army if you want to, and that is a totally valid, viable strategy. But, uh, they're gonna they're gonna have their own skills they're gonna have their own abilities and they're gonna have a permadeath mode which of course do not does not fail the match does not lose the match but it's important that you can use heroes only once uh per match so just to give you an idea of what hero units are gonna be uh, are gonna be uh working like in uh in wait somebody's tagging me Oh yeah, Beer Bear is in chat right now. He's one of our QA, one of our beloved QA guys. He's gonna know a lot of questions. So if, if you guys have ch have questions in chat that can't wait, tag Beer Bear. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna help you. And while I can linger on my gibberish and drinking <clears throat> drinking coffee, thank you, Beer Bear. Now where was I? Hero units in multiplayer. Yeah. Okay. Now. Mm, the next uh, the next thing that we have on our bullet point list in our roadmap is the second campaign for Slavs. You are seeing the first campaign of uh, Slavic nation right now, which is Mieszko, the guy who uh, united pagan tribes of Eastern Europe, who created a country out of this, like he created Poland, literally, and then he baptized the country. So the country became Christian. We have just advanced our technology. Good news. The Kuznia Gord gave us access to archer cavalry units, as well as stables and a blacksmith. Yep. So this is one of the parts of the mission where gaining a gourd gives you access to new technological advancements and progresses your nations. And we just wanted to kind of highlight the actual progress of Mieszko, getting the feeling that uniting the tribes made the kind of whole nation feel more powerful. This is this is something that we portrayed in here. I think it, it works kind of nice. I think, I guess, I don't know. Now, uh, the second campaign of Slavs that we are going to, uh, to implement in Ancestor's Legacy is a campaign about a son of Mieszko. And uh, there are two reasons why we think this is an interesting campaign. First one is, of course, it's a cool story. We think his story is a cool story. He was the guy who turned Poland from a country to a monarchy. He was the first king. Mieszko was not a king. He was a prince, a duke of Poland. Um, Oscar is probably wondering how to play. That's why he opened advisor and he's seeing some hints. <laughs> now, um, the uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this, Oscar. I've asked Oscar to play this mission because he's actually the author of this mission. He scripted that, and uh, so I, I thought it would be just more suitable to let him play this mission because I can't do chat. I'm no good at this. Now, uh, Bolesław Chrobry, which was the son of Mieszko the first, is actually uh, an interesting. Uh, his story is really interesting because his his biggest achievement in his life was uh, getting the crown of Poland. But to get this crown, he fought most of his life 
actually get it. Uh, and, uh, and 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 the tra tragic part of it is once he he got that, he actually lived a couple months and then died. And this is what we're going going to portray in this mission. And the and the and the second reason why we think this is just a cool. Mm, uh, just a sec, Kemi. And the second thing why we is, uh, why we want to portray Boleslav Hrabrim is we think is probably one of the biggest badass of the history of Polish heroes or whatever. You're gonna see that he's he was he was a very hasty, very emotional, very hot-blooded person. And this is this is a great like nar narrative-wise. This is a very great basis for doing and very very cool and interesting RDS campaign, which we are working on right now. Emmy was asking, will, he, will heroes be optional, a toggle in a game hosting settings, or is it on all the time? That's a good question, Kami. I don't know. I don't know. To be honest with you, I would need to get back to you with that question. If you guys are going to be watching that on YouTube, because we're also going to be going putting that on YouTube, we'll probably put it in the comments. But uh, I will need to. I'll need to check that. I. That's a, that's a valid question, of course, but uh, but an option like enabling or disabling heroes in multiplayer matches is probably something something that a lot of people would need. Maybe not in the first implementation. We'll see about that. Yeah. Mm hmm. So that was the second Slavic campaign that I spoke about. Uh, right now, Oscar is probably yeah he's expanding his nation. Uh, so I think he's uh, he's helped Nipeuka. Then he is hostily taking over the. Uh, uh, the uh, the the Gord, the second one, which was where was it? It was Kuznia, yeah. And right now he's gonna go back to Miswaf, and the last part of this mission is gonna be uh, working together with Miswaf, and I think he's gonna go back to a more peaceful route right now, so that you guys can kind of get there. You go. A little bit of both, and he wanted to give you both chocolate and peanut butter. Now uh, mods. Uh, there's not a whole lot that I can say about mods right now because uh, we have plans for giving you guys access to uh, as much as possible. It's an Unreal 4 game, so it's it's not it's a rocket science to technically implement mod support for the community. But uh, what I know right now is that um, somewhere between releasing the second Slavic campaign, uh, which is going to be free update, and the next one, which also is going to be a free update we are planning to also give community access to steam workshop and being able to whether it's going to be like you do your own multiplayer maps or you do a whole lot more than that uh bear with us and we are still finding the ground in here of how much we can implement and how much we can open up still community is going to be community probably a lot of people are going to dig deep into the files and find whatever they want so but uh we just want to support we're just going to give you guys support and, yeah um uh yeah and scout to be determined okay uh so that is mods we do have that in plans we want you guys to know that we're working on that as we were as we were mm, promising from the very beginning even still before the release all the games that destructive creations has ever ever produced eventually god uh, got uh, mod support and this is going to be exactly the case with ancestors legacy as well so yeah um next thing is party uh a lot of people were asking whether it's going to be possible to team up with a friends of mine and like seek a match where we can join together in a team so that that that, that we are not bound to seeking a server then jumping in and trying to make it on time so that slots are free in one team and we can jump in no we're trying to implement something that we right now call a party play and it's going to be a, a, a system where, where the main goal of this is to allow people to team up in a lobby or in just this, wherever. It's going to be Steam-based or is it's going to be in-game lobby. We'll see about that. And then decide to join a multiplayer game that is out there uh, via Quick Match, for example, and then jump into one team altogether. And that is something that, that, that we have next on our minds, on our maps. Mm, next, uh, next up is going to be second German campaign. Right now in Ancestors Legacy, we got six campaigns. Slavs and Germans are the only nations that have only one campaign available right now. The second one is like coming soon, and this second German campaign is the last one. Uh, which will there you go. We've we've advanced our nation even further right now. 
GG Oscar. Now, uh, the second German campaign is going to be uh, based on the history of Teutonic Knights. A lot of people have heard about them. If you have not, uh, then you might want to read them, uh, read it. Uh, Teutonic Knights are known uh, to Polish, for example, I'm Polish, the development team is Polish, because um, they're also a huge part of the Polish history, there was a very important battle, but this is not the battle that we're going to portray. We're going to do a slightly different part of the history uh, about the Teutonic Knights, but it's going to be cool, it's going to be interesting, and Teutonic Knights, they're like a symbol of power, of a, of a, of a strong, unbent will, dedication and faith. And this is going to be the basic basis of uh, of and, and it, I think it really suits well the nature of the German medieval warriors. Yeah. So that's a second German campaign, and yeah, the last topic I have for you today is expansion. And I'm I'm, I'm really sorry about the fact that I can't talk about it very very extensively right now. But I just want you to guys to know that somewhere at the end of the tunnel somewhere on the horizon right now what we have in plans is bigger expansion for ancestors legacy it's going to be a one with a price tag it's going to be a, a paid expansion uh, but uh, apart from actually being a single player campaign we also do want to introduce a new nation in a multiplayer matches as well so this is something that I know a lot of people are asking about. They're waiting for it. and But it's not going to happen in a month or two from now. We have all of these other items on the list. But we just want you guys to make sure that this is the plan as well. We want to do it. And, 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 and it's going to be a new nation. So it's not Germans, not Slavs, not Anglo-Saxons, and <clears throat> not Vikings. It's going to be something that you guys have not seen yet. And it's going to be cool. It's going to be awesome. And just wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah. So I think this is uh, this is going through all of the uh, all of the um, roadmap items that we've had. Um, I'm sorry that we do not have precise dates for you yet. This is very tough, especially in game development. It's very tough to give you these dates yet, so that we can fully commit to them. We would rather just give you kind of an order in which we want to implement new things, new content, new updates, and new features in Ancestors Legacy. And, uh, of course, this order might change as well. Like, I would not really be uh, surprised if party play would be introduced even before the free, uh, new free campaigns. Uh, because it's probably um, a feature that is slightly smaller and maybe our programmers could fit it, you know, before that. It's just a rough, rough idea. We, ha we had a talk in a team today and yesterday about how we can roughly how we could order these things on this list and this is something that that we kind of feel is the 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 most appropriate for now if it changes it's not because we knew it from the start it's it's like things change on the go as always let me see the uh <laughs> Barsadium says the new faction is going to be poland too huh <laughs> that wouldn't be too bad but no 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 it's not not even close uh okay 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 i see a lot of guys out there a lot of you guys out there in chat are happy makes me happy as well um all right let's watch the end of the of the mission with oscar um where are you exactly oscar right now so is it all three gores are claimed no oh you're back to me Pelka. okay so we're hopefully gonna get our third guard claimed right now okay okay War run. Let's build it over there. Whoa, so the nation is quite developed right now, as you can see. The end of this mission is, I mean, it's not a huge spoiler because a lot of people have already played the, the, the full game. But if you guys have not, the end of the mission is where, like, like the beginning of the entire campaign is like big dreams for Mieszko. He's thinking, I will unite these uh, tribes i will fulfill a promise that i gave to my father i want to do this and it's like 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 he's a big dreamer as people say recently and the th this entire mission is about doing that and it's really cool because you have quite some time it this mission is not very rushy one it's not a hasty there you go we got a third guard and this is where shit hits the fan because 
The real trouble starts right after then and, and the Mieszko realizes that Germans are not the ones who are going to let things happen the way he wants and they're going to start attacking. And the entire rest of this campaign, not available in the demo, unfortunately, but the entire rest of this campaign is where you actually uh, start working on the real trouble. And I think this is going to be the moment where, there you go, defend against German allies. Uh, this is this is maybe not the best wording, I, I <laughs> agree with that. It's something that we we'll probably need to work on. But it means uh, that they're allies of... Uh, mm, anyways, so that I don't get lost in this because it is complicated. Uh, we need to defend against some of the German troops that are attacking from multiple directions right now. Also, uh, it was a very good idea. Thanks, Oscar. Oscar has just changed his controls to gamepad. You can see that the UI has changed a little bit. Uh, there are hints on the bottom. Uh, the bottom banners uh, have become a top banners, as you can see, and so on and so on. And uh, Oscar has a nickname in here inside our studio. We call him Gamepad God, and he thinks he's cocky enough so that he can take the final fight, which is probably the toughest part of this mission, using a gamepad. Just to prove you guys that uh, playing the gamepad is not significantly more difficult than playing keyboard and mouse. So um, that's that. And uh, Ancestors Legacy 2 confirmed by NASA says Bersadium. Whatever, man. Whatever, okay. Sure, sure. You can see that the village has become gold right now. So Oscar has taken his time to upgrade this village. He has built up its defenses and it's going to be tougher for enemies to take it over right now. Yeah. Uh, playing with a gamepad is uh, like if you have a gamepad attached to your uh, to your PC, uh, whatever buttons you press, like either it's on a gamepad or on the uh, on the keyboard and mouse, it instantly uh, switches the user interface on the fly. So you, you can you can uh, you don't have to start a mission with a gamepad and continue it. You can switch anytime you want. Just just important little detail, I'm guessing. When you look at the minimap, you might have noticed that there are multiple points from which Germans start attacking right now. And this is like this this is where, where the player realizes that this mission is not gonna be so shiny and beautiful and sunny all the time in this entire campaign. And this is like a foreshadowing of what's to come in the in the remainder of this uh, of this campaign because you know, we're seeing Germans starting uh, attacking from north uh, northeast and southeast. And I'm pretty sure they're going to attack from south and from west as well in just a couple seconds. Uh, the, the goal for Oscar right now is, I'm guessing, to yeah, to defend his base. That's why he has spent most of the mission building traps and expanding the base and so on. And so on. Oh, so apparently Ancestors Legacy 2 confirmed by NASA was a meme that I didn't know. I'm sorry I didn't get the memo. It happens. I'm not a big internet kind of person. Let's see. I'm going to pump up the volume. Let's, let's have at least a little bit of gameplay in here. Proud warriors. Kill the warband. And their wolves. Warband, listen! seeing more troops arriving there you go from the west there you go us uh, yeah and i think that's not even all of it most of these uh shouts of units when you give them orders are actually our dev team members some say it's really cool that we made these recordings with dev team members some will say that's why they sound so lousy Choose your own medicine. I don't know. Get ready, 
Yeah, Atakuya on us is actually a very proper Polish pronunciation. They're attacking us. Oh yeah, and by the way, some people were wondering, so some of these speak Polish or German or whatever the nation is, some of these uh, of these shouts are spoken in proper English, why and so on. It was a design choice. Guys, guys it's, it's not a bug, because we've, we've actually seen reviews that mention that. So so wh why does Mieszko sometimes say do ataku and sometimes he says, I will crush them? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's how we felt would probably be cool. If it's not sorry, but yeah, that was the idea. They have a oh, so Beer Bear just corrected me in chat, thanks for that. Only Slavs are recorded by our Dev Team members, which is lucky that we have this mission in here, but yeah, I thought more nations, so sorry, my bad. We are taking enemy positions! Hurry! Oh yeah, so Kami has just asked the question in chat whether we are going to implement actual values of buffs, decreased, increased performance and so on and so on because right now where you increase uh, unit stats or whatever like with a blacksmith it only says attack plus or plus plus and so on. Um, the original idea is that was due to uh, balancing reasons because these values uh, are changing from time to time. That's one thing. And the other thing is these values might sound really weird. Like you, you see 200 or 2000 and it says nothing to you. Whereas a different stat has a very different range of values. And that would actually, you know, still be confusing if you try to compare one stat to another. That would not make sense. So this is the reason why we've done it the way that it works right now. But um, whether it will change in the future, can be please. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Finally, Oscar has access to cavalry and has used our brave mounted warriors to dismount this squad of archers. And we're almost at the end of the mission, by the way. Losers! This will teach them a lesson. These lands are ours now! Okay, all right guys, I'm gonna switch to roadmap once again to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for watching the stream. We're gonna put it on YouTube, of course, for anybody who did not get a chance to watch it. And once again, this is the uh, ideas and features and, and elements of the game that we're gonna be implementing from now on. Please bear with us. This is still what we have on the plate in the back burner or in the front burner, whatever. And But this is these are the things that are gonna be added to the actual ancestors legacy uh, i hope you guys are gonna have fun time trying out the demo if you're still wondering whether you want to buy the game uh, also check out the soundtrack that the bits of it at least that we've released for free maybe it will uh it will be also interesting to you and yeah um uh for all of those guys who are in the chat right now maybe somebody can paste a link to our discord server uh, in a youtube i will post it in the video description so that you guys can join our community it's a community driven discord so uh probably there is somebody available there at any given moment and you guys can talk to them and there's a lot of questions that are being answered right there i want to thank our community by the way they're very active guys and that's it that's it for the stream i hope we're gonna be seeing you guys around soon and i just can't wait for this tournament that is coming up we're gonna see who the winner is gonna be this time i wonder if cami is gonna defend this title hmm, thank you thank you and cheers bye bye